So my name is Caleb Blumitz. Uh, I play rugby here at Barack. So uh, my journey started when I was 15 years old in high school. Uh, I found out one of my close friends died and that was a very pivotal moment for me. So my name's Blair. I uh, play for men's lacrosse team. And the reason I'm here today is because I'm telling the story about uh, what happened to my uncle, who's my mom's brother. So why is telling their story so important? So, um, you know, spreading my friend's message became really important uh, to me because I noticed that uh, not only myself, but my friends, my family, uh, a lot of the people around me in my community were also going through it, right? Um, it wasn't just me and that it took a large piece of myself to understand that. I had to really step outside of myself and kind of view it from a different perspective. Stories are so important because, you know, uh, when someone passes away to suicide, a lot of them, a, lo a lot of people remember them uh, just through the way that they suffered. Uh, they're not really remembered for who they were before. Uh, it's just an event like that really overshadows about what a person's accomplished beforehand or even what they were going to accomplish. Uh, and I think spreading those stories about who they were as a person, the, pe the, lives, that they affect, uh, the lives that they affected, the people that they affected, uh, is something that's really important to actually not only, you know, uh, paying honor to that person and, you know, uh, really reflecting on what they did for not just you, but everyone else uh, that was in their life. Um, it's important to other people who are also struggling. I believe like telling the story is so important because, you know, it kind of gives people perspective on who I am as a person now because of the event that I've like gone through. And I know a lot of people look at mental health and suicide awareness and what as like a negative, but I believe it's important to try and spin this event that may have occurred in your life into a positive because it brings a whole new outlook on life and it gives you a whole new opportunity. Like I wouldn't be here today talking in front of this camera and talking to you about mental health and be so proud that I want to try and ch make a change um, if this didn't happen in my life. So you can't remember a person because of what they did. It's crucial to remember them for the memories that you had. Like when it comes to my uncle, he was smart, caring, loving, super funny, lit up any room. And that's kind of how you need to remember them. And all I can hope that moving forward is that he's in a better place now and he's happy and he's not suffering. And that I can just take this opportunity now to know kind of what people are going through and be there as a, as a comfort and be there as a support system for whether it's a teammate, a friend, or even a person walking down the sidewalk. I just, I know the struggles that families go through because of an event like this that may have occurred. And I just need to take this opportunity and run with it because, you know, it's suicide and mental health is, is a huge thing nowadays. And it's one of the leading like causes of death with anyone. And if there's any little difference that I can make because of this event that occurred, I'm going to try and do whatever I can. How do you personally advocate for mental health and how have you coped with past traumas? One thing, like, I guess what I'm trying to say is, um, I guess I put myself on like a pedestal of like that what I was going through was so much more important than what anyone else was going through at the time. And uh, you know that, that I've had the time to learn, I guess it's been almost three years now, um, it's taught me that like there's a lot of pain in the world, you know, there's a lot of people going through stuff, uh, grief, depression, anxiety, like things people deal with every day, you know. And uh, walking around with the idea that like what you're going through is um, not even comparable to what someone else is going through is just silly, right? Uh, one thing that really helped me is uh, is expressing gratitude, you know, like being happy, uh, expressing happiness and joy, just spreading it everywhere you go, you know, like that's one thing for me that's been huge in, in healing myself because if you walk around with this mask on every day and like you're frowning and you know, like you're not very approachable, like I find you're, you're not going to make a lot of friends. You're not going to be a happy person. Um, you got to just accept everyone, you know. You can't, you can't think that what you're going through is more than what someone else is going through. You always got to keep an open mind. So that's something I've been working on. So um, I guess a few years ago, uh, I just got out of a really bad point in time uh, in my own life. And uh, uh, I came across this saying, uh, ironically, on social media. but. Um, uh, it's traumatic events and, har and hard times can either be the sword that kills you or the armor that makes you impenetrable. Uh, and that was kind of a saying that really hit me. 
because uh, you know uh, I've talked a lot about uh, even in this interview uh, a lot about how you know just because someone's gone doesn't mean that like everything's gone a platform still created right so you know you can either roll over and die or you know you can get up and you know use these bad events to make you a stronger person you know what I mean like there's n nothing ever comes easy and I guess that's the same way with you know taking care of yourself and being a strong person uh, you know uh, the saying bad things happen to good people, bad things happen to everyone. Uh, it's just it's just a matter of how you respond to it and, you know, how, how, how you attack what comes next. Uh, you know, I think one of the ways that I was kind of able to cope with this and I remember thinking, like, I want to continue to carry on my uncle's legacy and always be able to remember him. And one of the ways that I kind of figured I could do that was by getting, like, a couple tattoos that I thought would be meaningful and that kind of raise awareness when it comes to mental health. And the first one that I... One of my first tattoos that I got was a semicolon. Um, a lot of people kind of know of the initiative behind that, but kind of what the semicolon means is instead of having a sentence end with a period, the semicolon keeps the paragraph and the main point moving forward. And that's something that we need to all do when it comes to mental health and mental health awareness is it shouldn't just be a conversation that ends as soon as the month of November concludes. We should honestly keep the conversation moving and keep trying to help everyone get better when it comes to their mental health and that it doesn't just need to stop when one of your buddies reaches out and says oh like I'm not doing too well you should continue to check in on that person and continue to be the support system that they need because just having that open line of communication and continue to talk with them is going to go a, w a long ways away than just having that end and then have an, an outcome that you might regret and then the second one that I got was a little quote that I have at the end of my wrist and it's we're all broken, that's how the light gets in. And I feel like this is an important one because a lot of people that are out there uh, struggling with mental health, they feel like they're all alone and they feel like they got nobody to talk to. But I promise you there's a lot of people out there that are going through exactly what you're going through and, and know what you're going through. And if you just have the courage to reach out and kind of start that communication with one another, you'll realize that you're not alone and that there's more people out there that are struggling with the exact same thing that you're going through and that we all are super empathetic, but also realize how strong you are, that you're still here and you're telling your story instead of it being the other way around, which is an outcome that nobody wants. Do you think sports communities can use stories like these to build better environments for athletes? I think it's pretty important that sport communities use these kind of stories because honestly, when it comes to open communication, especially in men's sports, it's not really as existent as it should be. And when it comes to mental health and it comes to situations like these that have, have arisen, like when I think of my sport or even like rugby or any of those contact sports, like you're going to war with your brothers and you're supposed to have everyone's back. And if you have that open communication with all your teammates, whether it's, you know, you're walking to class with them and they feel like they're comfortable enough to tell you what's going on and tell you what's, what they're stressing about in life or even if it's just, just like an assignment, that's gonna make you that much closer and that's gonna make that bond that much stronger, which is gonna positively affect your team and it's gonna make you all come together. So uh, I think uh, especially, definitely through my experience doing this, uh, I've learned that it's helped me gain a much deeper connection, not only just with like the athletes in this community at Brock, um, but just with people, you know, I found myself walking around with my head held really high, you know, happy about what I've been through and uh, happy about all the lessons I've learned through my experience. And um, I think having the ability to share that, especially through uh, something like this, is very powerful. You know, it, it shows uh, people, gives them a perspective, a different perspective on uh, what it's like, you know, to be an athlete, a student, and then also have a personality outside of that. You know, like a lot of people think, um, I mean, there are athletes that only focus on the sport they play. Uh, there's a lot of people that that take things very extreme, but I've learned um, you have to find that balance, you know, on and off the field. And I think sharing my story is, is, uh, has helped me to do that for sure. I think if more people were to share their stories within sports communities, the closer people are going to grow, you know. Uh, it's like the more honest you are with mom, uh, the more honest you are with your mom, you know, like the more you can grow. Like <laughs> the more honest you are with your parents, the more you can grow with them. And uh, the more honest you are with your friends and the family and the people around you that you love.